just walking around the corner and coming back an hour later. <laughs> Hi, I hope you're all well. If you are new around here, hello, it is lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. My name's Alana and I'm a 36 year old lady living in Scotland and that is where my accent is from. And on this channel, we predominantly talk all things skincare, beauty, hair care, lifestyle, travelly, bloggery, bloggery, bullshit. But with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm, cynicism, and some might say honesty thrown in on top. Now I do like the odd sweary words, so if you're not into that kind of thing, I completely understand. Please feel free to vacate at any point. But if it does sound like your kind of thing, then there's a little subscription button in the corner feel free to hit that and the little thumbs up all that other youtuber crap now this video is going to be a review of the shark flex air styler air styler is it a hair styler air styler clearly the best reviewer because i didn't even remember the name so it's an air styling and drying system this is the one that was kind of brought out to try and compete with the likes of the dyson air styler as well so I'm going to show you it today. This is it here. This is it with the volume brush on it. I had to think about that there. And I have to tell you now, this is me here having used this product. So let's just get into this. Okay, I'm coming to you before I've washed my hair because I want to show you what my hair is like naturally. Now I waved it maybe two days ago. I didn't do anything to it yesterday. And you can see a very slight kink in it there. But if I wave or curl my hair, nine times out of ten it is going to drop out and if I sleep on it they are gone the next day so you know when people are saying like oh that two day curls or whatever that's never going to happen for me a lot of the time I have to put a few waves through the top again maybe use something like um the way wave spray to bring it back to life a little bit but nine times out of ten I am having to use a heat product like a straightener or something like that to put something through it again. Today I'm going to go into the shower, I'm going to wash it for you and we are going to try out this shark styler. Now I have already used it, it is a total disclaimer, I have already tried this but I wanted to show you what my hair is naturally like. Okay so I've been and I've washed my hair just for reference, I washed it with the John Frieda volume lift shampoo and conditioner, it's one of the ones I always use and the reason I use it isn't because I feel like it gives my hair any more thickness but it's a nice lightweight shampoo so when you've got hair like mine that's quite fine and quite flat it doesn't weigh it down when you're styling it so that's why I like to use that one. Used it for over a decade at this point. Now let me just show you this baby right here. First of all just a disclaimer I did not buy this full price and I did not have it sent to me. Basically somebody I knew was getting rid of this they had already bought it. I think the retail price for this at the moment is around about £300. Uh, I will put links below where you can get it. There probably will be offers places as well, but I think it's around about £299, £300. Let's call it a nice round number. I got mine for a fraction of that. I did not pay that at all, but I did really want to try this. One, I want to see if I can get my hair to have more volume in it. Two, it is not as expensive as the Dyson, which everybody raves about. But also three, I feel like if this gives me an extra hand, because if I'm just using one hand to do stuff, then I have another hand in case I need to grab a toddler at some point. <laughs> I thought that might be a help. Let me just show you what is inside here and what it comes with. Here we go. So see behind here, this is obviously the booklet it comes with. This is a diffuser. I haven't took this out because I don't have curly hair. It's highly unlikely I'm going to use a diffuser at any point. This one here is supposed to be for straight and sleek styling. So it has a brush on one side and then it's flat on this side. These areas do get hot. See these pink areas, the rose gold areas? They get hot. So like this one for instance, this is the volume brush, you've got to pick it up by the end here. The same goes for the curling stuff. Can you see the little divot on the top? This here, this is the cool bit. So you pick it up like that when you're trying to take it off and on the brush. So this one here is for volume, it's a completely, I'd say oval, I was going to say cylindrical but it's oval, round brush and that one is for volume and then you have the attachment just to dry your hair, it's a little flat one. This also has cool bits on the side here so if you're pulling it off you just touch these bits here it tells you all that in the little booklet to be fair i'd read it and then you have two curling wands one that points this way which is my right as i'm looking at it and one that points that way which is my left that i'm looking at 
And this here is the base product. This is the wand, so to speak. Um, it comes with what looks like a little like adapter, as if you would put it into your laptop, but it doesn't unplug at all. It's all one attachment. You still have to plug it in. You can't get wireless or anything like that. So let me just show you the buttons here. I'll come a little bit closer. This one here is to turn it off and on, the little like rose gold one, like so. This one here is for heat, and when I turned that on there, you've probably seen there was three lights on, so you push it to get the lowest heat or the highest heat, and this one here is for the fan, and the same thing, lights come on to say the lowest fan, the highest fan. This one here is the cool shot, so if you were doing something like curls, and you're curling your hair with the heat, and then you give it a little blast with the cool to try and cool it to set the curl as well. And then up the top here, there is a little like clip, and that is to attach the different bits, and this little one is to rotate so it also goes like that. So if you want to use it this way as well. So I am gonna attach the normal hair dryer attachment here. Um, it also spins round by the way, it doesn't have to stay that way once you click it on, it will spin any way you want it. So I'm gonna attach that now because the advice that it gives in that little booklet for any of the styles or tools you're gonna to use is that you should dry your hair maybe like something between 60 to 90%, I want to say it says, maybe 80 to 90, I can't remember exactly. Maybe for different styles it's slightly different. But you have to make sure your hair's kinda of dry and just get into that damp stage before you start styling it. So I am gonna do that first. I am also gonna put a little bit of thickening spray through it. I used a mousse with it the other day as well, just to try different things because as I say, I've got really fine and flat hair. So I do like to get into the roots and put in something that is a little bit like thickening or volumizing or lifting when I'm styling it. So I would still do that regardless of using this hair tool, so I'll go ahead and do that. That was the Kristen S thickening spray. By the way, the mousse I used the other day was a Schwarzkopf one, so it doesn't really matter what you're using, whatever you are into. So just running that through the roots of my hair here. Now what I am going to do is tip my hair upside down and just blast this until it is nearly dry because that's obviously what it suggests. I don't think you need a great run through of that. What I will say though, just before I get started is I feel like it is really quite a quiet hair dryer in comparison to other ones that I've had. Um, I'm just going to switch it on so you can hear. You're probably thinking that's really loud. Okay, so I would say that my hair is probably almost like it feels a little damp through the length still But I feel like here it's pretty dry and on the ends it's pretty dry uh, So I would say that's probably about 60 to 90 percent whatever the fuck it was So first of all, I'm gonna take this off because I don't need this Also, I presume you could just dry it like this. I haven't done that, but I don't see why you couldn't. That maybe took me five minutes there to get it to this level of dryness. If you're someone who has really, really thick hair, really, really long hair, then maybe this would take you a lot longer. I mean, my hair is a fair length now, it sits about here, but it's not thick. So if you had thicker hair, you would maybe have to section it and do that. But for me, turning my head upside down and just blasting it for five minutes, it would usually do that anyway. So I think it's a really good hair dryer in that situation. Actually, maybe even better than the one I'm using at the moment. I feel it does it quicker. I have to say that about it. Whew, I am sweating now. Oh, mm. had skincare on and now I'm like, oh, all sweaty. So what I'm gonna do is section my hair and here's my plan, because as I said, I have already used this and I already have some thoughts. So on this side of my head, I'm gonna try and do the volumizing effect to get a nice bouncy blow dry. And on this side, I'm gonna show you the curls because I feel like the two in the end up maybe gave me quite a similar look. So I want to show you how it works. First of all, I'm gonna just section my hair off. What I'm gonna do first of all is get this fringe because I cut it myself the other day. I've not been to the hairdresser. Honestly, Daniel is gonna be so angry at me. Um, I've not been to my hair salon or my hairdresser since December, I want to say. It's been so, so long. But again, see when you're a mum and you're just so fucking busy, you just don't have time to always do the things that you want. And uh, getting a haircut hasn't been a priority, which is really annoying. And actually, I'm enjoying the length at the moment, so it's fine, but when I go back, I will need to get more color put through it. What, I don't know yet, because as I said, I don't know if I want to go that red color again, because I feel like everybody had that kind of copper orange hair for a while there. Um, but I also feel like I don't want to lose length. I don't know what I want to do, excuse me, if I've got any hairy pits. 
I don't really care. So I'm just sectioning this, first of all, um, into like top and bottom. And I'm just gonna use a couple of clips here to do that. There we go. And then side by side, there you can see. So let me show you, first of all, the curls. As you can see here, this is the little adapter. You just clip it on. It's really, really easy. They come off really, really easy and you just clip them on really, really easy. I am using the one to my left because obviously I want the curl to curl out from my face so I want it to go this way so let me just show you what it does on this first section here I am gonna have to put the sound on so excuse me I also have had the heat up quite high when I've been doing this for the curls um, I think for volume and stuff you could maybe have it a little lower and then I do the cool shot at the end so Okay, so that's me done that one. Now you obviously don't have to turn it off. That's it there. It's pretty impressive, right? That's pretty goddamn impressive. Um, but you obviously don't have to turn it off to take the curl out. What I do find is though, for instance, this one now is sitting here. And if I go on to do the second one, this one sometimes pulls up into the next curl, which makes it a little bit, or as you've probably seen there when I was doing that little section, um, like it, like this bit here, it's like blown towards my face, so it sucks, but obviously there's air coming out as well that blows against the next one you're gonna do. So that can be a little bit tricky because I do feel that then this loses a little bounce from the air that's coming from the next one as well. So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of uh, sh shampoo, what am I talking about? Hairspray, this is the Volume Lift Hairspray as well from John Frieda, and I'm just gonna spritz that first curl. I don't want it to be like super crispy, I'm not wanting Shirley Temple here, but just so it holds a little bit of that because I don't want to completely lose it. That might be something you normally would do with curls anyway, but I don't usually, and I find that with this, I need to because you'll see what happens next. So that is the second curl there. Again, I am just gonna give this a little spritz with hairspray just to try and keep it because the other day when I didn't use hairspray, I felt these fell quite flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this whole side and then I will come back to you. Okay, so we're coming to the last kind of two sections of this side of my head. And this is what I was wanting to point out. So that's the last section I've got here. I've got one here, I've curled this bit. See, once I start actually curling this section, it's blowing the front section forward, it's blowing the other bits backward. Like it doesn't soak up all the hair that you would be able to do if you were doing this with a straightener or a curling wand. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's kind of, can you see that? It's kind of soaking up hair from underneath as well, like the ones in the bottom section. And then I can never get these little bits in for some reason. It just kind of wants to blow them back out the way so I have to keep curling it in ah see it's just sucked up more from underneath you can actually see it doing it it's sucking hair up from the bottom sections here okay so that is me here we go look, look that one's really like super tight up at my face here just give it a wee spritz there we go and something else I just want to point out is see when you're using that tong or I don't know what you call it tool quite close to your face here. It's very hot, it's very burny. Now I've got it up at the highest setting, um, but that's what it suggests for doing curls, so that's why I've done it. Um, but it can be quite nippy, like burny up at your head. You know when you're using your straightener and it's maybe just too close to your skull? But this is not like at my skull, it was like sitting here at the side, so there's a good section there but it's not near my head. Uh, and it's still, cause it's kind of sucking and blowing at the same time. Oh, Alan said this to me, he was like, it sucks and it cuts. If you've Wayne's World reference, if you know me, I love you if you get the reference. But he was like, so it sucks and it blows. And I was like, yeah, it kind of does. Anyway, I am now going to do this side, which again, obviously for the point of this video, this is maybe more dry now than I started, but I can still feel it's kind of damp through here. So I'm going to use the other brush for this side. And again, it's just really easy, clips on. This is the one I really wanted to like buy it for, if I'm honest with you, because I feel like 
I could potentially go in with wetter hair than this at the moment and dry and style at the same time. That was my go-to to save me time. The curls, I'm kind of like, I just wanted to try it out to show you, but um, the actual styling and getting a bit more volume was the reason that I bought it. So for the volume one, I think it doesn't say you have to use quite as much heat. So we're just gonna get on with this. I'm gonna under curl, all that kind of stuff, put loads of volume in, and I will come back to you when I finish this side. Okay, so that's me use that on this side. I am gonna be honest with you, I don't feel like this does anything my hair dryer doesn't do. I actually find that trying to get that brush in to the roots as well is quite difficult. And as I say, because the brush itself heats up, it's quite uncomfortable to actually have it that close to your head. Um, personally, if you want that big bouncy blowout look, I've seen loads of people doing it on Instagram and TikTok, you do your kind of turn unders and then you put rollers in and then you take your rollers out and they're big and bouncy and beautiful, big rollers. Um, that's certainly what my hairdresser does. If I want a big bouncy blowout because I've got quite flat and fine hair, hairdressers, as I've said already, are miracle workers with regards to bouncy blowouts. Do I think that it's gave me more volume, more root lift? Maybe but I feel like it's not that nice, sleek, smooth. Like even when I'm trying to turn it under on the ends, so it looks like a little bit like, oh, I've had a nice, I don't think it's done anything. However, however, and this is how I'm saying, I've already used this and this isn't just a first impressions. I love what it does to my fringe, let me just show you. Now I'm swapping onto the other brush, which is supposed to be like the smooth and sleeking brush. I personally think because this is a bit smaller, it would actually work a bit better to get in at my roots. I feel like the other one is so big, sorry, the other one is so big that it's actually difficult to get in to any roots. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna curl my fringe under and blast it. Okay, so I love this shape at the front it is given. Usually I just do that with a barrel brush. And I do like the fact that it's given me that kind of, what do you call it? People are calling it curtain bangs now. I can't remember what you used to call it. Um, but it's given me that kind of fringe where it's just sitting nice like that. Normally what I would do is just roll brush my fringe and then maybe take a straightener to give it that flick at the side and it kind of does both at once. However, am I buying a product for just my fringe? No, entirely not. And at this point, since I've started this video, uh, we're talking, I started filming this about 30 minutes ago. So once I've finished these, the curls, you can see how much these have dropped. Like they're still there, but it's completely dropped. And what I would say is, if I just run my fingers through here, because I've done this the other day, run my fingers through my curls, this actually ends up looking a little bit more like I've had a nice, bouncy blowout, blowout, a nice bouncy blowout on this side than the side with the blowout attachment. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Also, what I am gonna do is, because it is now 10 to 11 and I need to go and pick up Jack from the nursery. I'm aware I'm gonna go into a nursery now and half my head is waved and half my head isn't. I am gonna come back to you. As I say, it's 10 to 11 just now. I can actually even, is it 10 to 11? Is that watch fast? Yeah. So. Going on five to 11, can you see, look at the little face. Going on five to 11, right, so, five to 11 now, I live very close to nursery, don't worry. Uh, and basically, I am gonna go and get him, I'm gonna sort him, get him lunch, all that kind of stuff, put him down for a nap. I'm gonna come back to you when he's down for his nap, and you can see where this is sitting at that point, and if you feel it made any difference. I feel like this side of my hair has a little bit of volume, but no more than what my hair dryer would do. So I will be back. Hello, so I am back now, it is 10 past 12, right? So I've just put him down for his nap. That's also why I'm speaking a little bit quieter. But I've just put him down for his nap and basically I thought I would come back and show you what my hair was like. 
<laughs> because I feel a little bit like where have all these curls went? What I do feel like is that on this side, it does look a little bit more like I've had a relatively nice blow dry done and this is it just kind of sitting nicer because it's got a little bit of a curl underneath here. Whereas, as I said, on the side that I done for the volumizing, I could have just blow dried my hair and it would have looked like this. I could have brushed it through and it could have looked like this. I still stand by what I said with regards to the fringe. I like how it's got my fringe sitting. I can bring, bring my fringe forward, whatever. But I do quite like what it's done to the fringe area. I like that. However, for the grand old price of about £300, do I think this tool is worth it for someone with kind of fine and straight hair? Probably not. It's a difficult one because I obviously have the type of hair I've got. For people who've got really, really curly hair, I don't know how you would feel about this. I think this would take an awful lot to get your curly hair straightened. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're using it as a blowout and getting a straight blowout, I still think you're probably gonna have to use something like a straightener thereafter. Whether it's afro curly hair or just curly hair, I think if you use the diffuser, I couldn't give you a review on that because my hair, as you can see, is super duper straight. Just naturally zero wave or kink to this hair. There's just nothing in it. When I seen people using styling tools, um, a lot of the time they'll use the big blowout wand, like the big, whether it's a circular one or the straightening one, whatever. They'll use it and then they'll put a roller in and roll it up, right? Fine, but I could do that with a hairdryer again. I, I don't think that the tool is making too much difference. Does it make things faster? That's another question. I feel like as if, if I just used the wand to as I went along to dry at the same time, it might make things faster, but I don't need something to straighten my hair at the same time. If I could go from wet to curly, then yes, I could argue the point that it makes it a bit faster. But because you have to dry it first, like to that 90, 80, 90%, whatever it was, I'm gonna check that. I keep saying it throughout the video there and I thought I have not even, there you go, begin with 80 to 90% dry hair, it says, for curling. For the volume, it again says, dry your hair until it's 80 to 90% dry. So I'm kind of like, okay, so just dry your hair and then you have to do all the curling bit. That took me longer than it would for me to run a straightener and do some waves through. And I'm telling you right now, they would have held better than this had. This is, wait, where are the curls? Where are the curls in this side of my head now? Just walking around the corner and coming back an hour later, I just want, uh, you know me, you know me, I've always got to give an honest review. It's one of these situations where I think as a hair dryer, it's really good. It dries your hair really fast. I think as a styling product, I love that it's got the brush on the end to do my fringe. I really like that because normally I'm holding the dryer and doing a brush at the same time. So I really like that too. I think curling wise, don't waste your money. I don't really know whose hair this is gonna work on because I feel like if you've got thicker hair than mine, you're gonna have to use really small sections to get it to work. And again, as I said, that was me putting hairspray in as well. And if you get thicker hair than mine, I imagine it's gonna be heavier than mine and it's gonna fall flat as well. As for the blowout thing, like the volume, I am no expert on a blowout. I am not an expert blow dryer. So that could be user error as well. I know some people might be watching me like, oh, you done that all wrong. Absolutely. But I am a mere Joe Blogs in the street who has picked this up. And I imagine lots of people might do the same as me. So as I say, if I was to do all that volume and then put rollers in, do I think it would have had a better effect? Yes, but I think that's the point of the tool. You're not needing to do that. And I would argue, absolutely pointless. This just looks like my hair if I dried it naturally with my hair dryer. So if you're someone who's maybe got a slight frizzy hair, like not super curly, maybe a wave of frizzy hair and humidity and stuff affects it, maybe for you the smooth and sleek aspect brush, like that one, would work really well. If you're somebody who's got a little bit of a wave to your hair and you just want it to be nice and shiny and smooth, then maybe that would be an idea for you. But for me, who I already have quite straight, shiny hair. It's, it's done nothing. <laughs> it's done nothing. As I say, I think this side looks nicer. I think it looks like I've had a nice bit of a blowout done on this side. This side just looks completely normal to me. So that is my word of warning that I think that the Shark Flex Styler 
Mm, it's a no for me. I just didn't think it's done anything, not anything enough to be spending £300 on. I think that's a crazy amount of money for this hair tool when you probably already have a hair dryer and you probably already have straighteners, curling wands, all that other kind of stuff. So that's my review of the product. What am I now going to do with it? I'll probably use it as a hairdryer, to be honest with you. Use it as a hairdryer. I may even see um, if there's anybody else in my life who wants to try it out. I, I honestly just don't know who this would work for. I feel like maybe if you had shorter hair, like I've got friends who have like shorter hair and you're wanting to do the curls, but I still don't feel like they're going to hold. I mean, arguably my hair is longer, maybe that's why they fell. But if I do that with a straightener, curl my hair with a straightener or a curling wand, they don't fall that quickly. They do eventually, because I've got very straight hair, but not that quickly, especially using hairspray. What are your thoughts and views? What do you think? And have you tried this product? Have you tried the Dyson one as well? Let me know what you think. And if you have any tips for me, maybe you are somebody who's watching this being like, oh, try this, try that. You've used it completely wrong. Please comment them down below because I would love to know. And I will see you all again soon in the next one. Bye.